it! I'm Travis Downey and this is Adam Rosenberg and this is uh, this week's installment of the Northwest Florida Daily News' Prep Football Blitz. Uh, week two, Fort Walton Beach the only school that's off this week. Uh, a lot of games on the docket, some really good games. Uh, looking back at last week, what kind of stood out to you? Well, the fact that we weren't very good at picking football games, yeah. first of all. Yep. I told you they were stone cold locks, stone cold locks in the opposite direction. Um, <laughs> yeah. Niceville fans, we, we, we don't doubt anymore. Um, that was an impressive performance that, impressive. The, that the Eagles put on against Tallahassee Lincoln. Um, you know, it was, it was pretty, besides the final score, it was a pretty dominating performance mm -hmm. by the offensive line, the running game. Niceville's defense looked great. The passing game still doesn't look like anything to write home about, but that's something that you get ironed out as the week goes, as the season goes on. Yeah, very impressed with Navarre too. 14 nothing shutout win over for Walton Beach. Another game that we missed badly. So uh, with that, I guess we go ahead and look ahead to this week's games, starting with Rocky Bayou and Pinal Baptist. Right. Um, you know, I said last week I was planning on picking Rocky Bayou to win a football game this year, at least a couple maybe. I'm going to start this week. I'm going to go with Rocky Bayou. Um, last year. They lost to Penile by only two points. They put on a good performance last week. Rocky Bayou did, only losing 20 to 12 to Osceola Christian. Right. And I think, you know, it's it's one of those times where Rocky Bayou kind of sees that this is a good chance as any, as good of a chance as any to end that losing streak, and they're going to be ready to play. Yeah, and I like what Josh Childers is doing there, and, and the mindset he's trying to instill in those kids. I like Rocky Bayou as well. This is the week I'm going with the Knights uh, to get a win. Um, next, we have Sneeds traveling to Baker. Mm -hmm. Um, Baker, you know, played the Bolton Bowl last week against Crestview. They, they held their own for a while until the depth kind of got a hold of them. Now they're playing a team that's more their size, more their, uh, their classification anyway. Sneeds lost 39-6 to last week to Bluntstown. And the confidence that Baker got from kind of hanging with their rival Crestview for a while, I think that's going to lead to Baker getting their first win of the season this week. Yeah, I like uh, Logan Wagner under center for them. Veda Moore we know about. Wagner's really come on. First, last year was his first season, I believe, starting as a quarterback. Uh, I like what they're doing. I I'm going to go with Baker as well to get this win and kind of start district play uh, on the right foot this year. Um, now we have a team that didn't play last week, Freeport, and mm -hmm. they will be traveling to Milton. Um, you know, Freeport's a team that had a great season, a, right. a school, you know, the season. Historic. A historic season right. last last year. Um, they're a team that lost a lot of players. And I think traveling to Milton's a tough way to start a season for, right. a, for a young group of guys that a lot of those guys are going to be seeing their first varsity action mm -hmm. maybe, their mm -hmm. first action as starters, counting on to carry the load. I'm going to go with Milton in this game, but you know, look for it to be fairly closer than a lot of people think. Yeah, Milton coming off of a surprising 6 nothing loss to Gulf Breeze. Gulf Breeze didn't win a game last year. Uh, I, I'm going with Milton. You know, this is this is exactly the way Freeport opened their season a year ago with a road loss at Milton. Went on to bigger and better things. Uh, historic season for those guys. Uh, I think Jim Anderson and that crew, they're going to be eager to see how that offensive line plays. Really disappointed with their play in their kickoff classic. Uh, Hopefully they can make some, some good steps in that direction, but I'm going to go with Milton this week. Um, staying over there kind of in Walton County, we got uh, Northview traveling to South Walton. South Walton won 27 and nothing last week, and reading some of uh, Coach <laughs> Barron's comments, it would have looked like they were on the other end of that 20 to 7, 27 and nothing score. Right. Um, he wasn't all that happy with the way his team played. He was happy with the way his defense played. Um, you know, Northview beat Graceville 24 to 6, so there's not much we can kind of divine from their last sure. week's scores. But I'm just going to go with South, Wal South Walton on the basis that, you know, they, they were there last year. They had a great season last year. Um, you know, they, they, they're coming off a big win. And if you're able to apparently win that big and still make that many mistakes, apparently you're doing something right. So I look for them to eliminate some of those mistakes and kind of get in the right direction this week. Yeah, I like South Walton in this one, too. It's at home. And last year, South Walton, you know, a big reason they were so successful, 4-1 and one at home, the lone loss coming to Walton. Uh, I, I like them to take care of this one. It's going to be a close game. Uh, David Barron, always good with the quotes, called it a stomp down shooting war. Shooting war. So uh, it's going to be a physical game. I like South Walton to get, to get the win, though. Um, we got Wes Gadsden coming over to Crestview. Mm -hmm. uh, Crestview gets to host another home game. Yep. Um, you know, West Gadsden's a team that lost 26 to nothing to, I'm assuming, their crosstown rival in East Gadsden, which is a 2B team. Um, Crestview's not a 2B team. No. They're a, a big time, a big time big boy club. Mm -hmm. They got some some size, some strength that we've talked about all through the preseason. I look for Crestview to win this, and I look for them to win it fairly easily. And if they don't, yeah. I'd imagine uh, yeah. Coach Brunson is going to be a little upset. Will not be pleased. Yeah, I like Crestview. Jerry Siler, 114 yards rushing last week, two touchdowns, and B.J. McClure really stood out too. Looking over at the stats, uh, two picks, one return for a touchdown. 
Uh, I, yeah, I like Crestview to just to, to really exert their, their dominance and in in, in their size advantage uh, to get a win this week. And uh, moving on, you know, last week, Navarre kind of announced their presence. We, we know they had a great game in the kickoff classic. Yep. We didn't think that was going to transfer over to the, to the season opener against Fort Walton. Yeah. We were proved wrong. Um, you know, Navarre, dominant defensive performance. You got to worry a little bit about kind of coming down from that game when they host a team yep. in Walton. That's a smaller school, you mm -hmm. know, but still just one county over kind of a rivalry. Um, two counties over, I guess, sure. in Navarre's case. Geographic. Um, exactly. Um, I'm going to go with Navarre, but I'm, you know, look for them to kind of shake off a little bit of the cobwebs from last week's kind of giddy win mm -hmm. early, and then they'll kind of cruise later. Yeah, I like Navarre as well. Uh, and being on the sideline for that, that win over Fort Walton Beach and in the locker room afterwards, they were almost already focusing to the week ahead. And that was one thing Lashley was really impressed with, Chad Lashley, the Navarre football coach. Uh, I like Navarre. I think it's going to be a good game. Uh, but I think that defense that Navarre has and the way they can take away a passing game, uh, especially deep, deep threats, I, I like them to win this one. And closing out with kind of our game of the week, we got – Niceville, the team that we we also doubted last week, they're going right. to come next door and play Choctaw. Um, you know, Choctaw is a team that kind of hung with them early against Pensacola Catholic. Obviously, we know what Niceville did; they pretty much dominated a, a pretty good yeah. Tallahassee Lincoln team. I'm going to look for Niceville, kind of the same vein as Navarre. They might struggle early, but you know, with Coach Hicks kind of leading that team, he's not going to allow that to go on for too long. Right. I think Niceville is going to eventually cruise to a maybe two-score victory. Yeah, you game. know, last year this was a 49 nothing. Niceville win. The clock ran the fourth quarter. Uh, it was an ugly game. I think Choctaw has been looking forward to this one all summer. Uh, and, and, you know, they're coming off that loss to Catholic to open the season. They played pretty well in that game, had some turnovers that hurt them. Uh, having said that, you look at Niceville, impressive win over Lincoln, 93 passing yards. They've got to work on that. Even Coach Hicks, you know, alluded to the fact that wasn't one of their better passing games, from the stats can tell you. Uh, but 228 yards rushing from Poland and Pratt. I just think in the end, Nice will win this game. I think it's going to be a close game, especially being at home for, for Choctaw. But I like Niceville to, to, to come in and get a win. Well, that's it for this week. Um, those are our picks. Hopefully, they're a little better, better than we did last week. Yeah. You know, um, sorry if we, if we motivated anyone in the wrong direction. <laughs> but um, again, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again next week.